So first, I would like to introduce Miss Virginia Seidel. in a musical version of the melodrama, The Drunkard. And we were really very nice people. We were never drunk during the show. <laughs> that was many years ago. And fortunately, uh, recently, with his very pretty wife, Pamela Hall, um, I was in a benefit performance of Promenade. That was just a few months ago. And I do know that Eddie has been very supportive of Dancers Over 40, as, as uh, John has said, has contributed the St. Luke's Theater to many of the tributes. And it has been gratis, which is Latin, I think, for free, or maybe Spanish for free. So, um, and he's a, a very good friend in, to all of us. <laughs> And one more guy who's already been up here once. We're, we're making him work for his uh, lunch. Uh, Mr. Kurt Peterson. Why is he up here again? Well, uh, I met Ed uh, in, in 1969 because I had the great pleasure of playing opposite Hamill Hall in uh, Dear World, one of Jerry Herman's lesser known hits. <laughs> and uh, I met Ed back then. And, and uh, Ed was out in California for, for many years, and uh, uh, I did know him first as a performer. He's performed in many, many, many shows. He started earlier than I did as an actor and a performer, and also in television shows. And since that time, he's become a wonderful producer, and, uh, and, uh, and a very important producer. I, I think Ed is the anecdote to Spider-Man, if you know what I mean. Where Spider-Man costs 65 million, I know Ed has put together shows that it costs about 65 dollars to start with. <laughs> and they run long too, so I uh, I had we celebrated a year with our show together, and I'm telling you, without Ed's uh, expertise, his commitment, his passion, his uh, his his theaters, uh, we would we would not be around uh, at this point. We would have been uh, dead in the water a long time ago. I have the ultimate respect for him. Ed, please come up. Thank you, Ed. Not done yet. We're not done yet. Um, I also want to thank Ed for um, lending the theater um, for an emergency situation about a month ago when uh, Carol had a show and the theater uh, pulled out from under her. And I called Ed and said, Ed, you know, we, have this, we love her, we love her, we need uh, space. And he uh, graciously uh, loaned St. Luke's out on a very short notice. And uh, also, you will see uh, in your program that Carol Channing is going to be appearing at St. Luke's Theater December 23rd with a discount code for Dance Number 40 members. So, uh, so that again, thanks to Ed Gaines. And uh, Ed, come on up. all that different 
different styles and different methods, but they all were united in one thing. They all agreed that I was not a dancer. <laughs> I tried, I did my best. I got hired to do Baby John and West Side Story, What Were They Thinking? <laughs> I got hired to do Tulsa and Gypsy by Grover Dale, who should have known better. I worked with him. <laughs> so uh, it's, um, and I used to take those challenges on. I wouldn't think about it now. But um, we did them, we tried, we loved doing it. I wish I had been more of a dancer. I remember the auditions for George N. at the Palace, and Joe Harvey was there. Um, at three or four auditions, Joe Layton was you know, running things. And I'd read and I'd sing, and that part of it was, was not a problem. And then I'd do the combinations, you know, not so well. And Michael Stewart came backstage from the audience after I went and went off after like this fourth audition. And he told me, I told you for years to take dance classes. <laughs> Gypsy, show how old I am, 1959, I think it was. I got down to the final audition, and Robbins got me at seven auditions. Then he hired me next year for Peter Pan. So, what can you do? <laughs> so anyway, just to conclude, um, I've had the great experience of working with so many wonderful dancers um, in the past, the ones I remember. I mean, there are so many, but I, I think of names that jump out. There should be like a wall somewhere on Broadway with like a war memorial. Because God knows anybody who's been in an original Broadway musical, there's definitely parallels to being in a war. Um, but I think of names like Gina Belkin, uh, uh, Imelda DeMartin. Uh, God, there's so many of them. Uh, Susan Lucky. Um, I, I, I'm blanking. There are just too many to think of. But some of these people I remember so well. And um, oh, two, I just read the Equity News just sharing your lives with us this afternoon. Everybody. Also, a, uh, a heroic uh, thank you for Carol Channing, Ms. Richard Skipper, for coming out and uh, having us yet again. Uh, I'd like to thank our board of directors, uh, who are always there for us. Uh, Karen, Lois, Jed, uh, George, Everybody, Kathy, um, I'm gonna forget people are gonna hate me, I don't know why. But anyway, um, all of our board, Eric Perry, who designed our, our Legacy Awards. Um, who designed our awards, who designed our, our postcard, who designed our logo, great guy. Uh, Elizabeth Adam, who uh, made this fabulous cake that you're eating now. Uh, and, you know, wonderful uh, cake. And yeah, all of our, our honorees have little cakes, too. Um, so uh, please join us, our next event, uh, in the spring will be our second annual dance concert to benefit Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, and Project Achieve, the uh, New York City HIV Vaccine Trials Unit. That's on Monday, April 18th at the Bridge Cup Arts Center in the Jerome Robbins Theater, the big theater. So we really need your support for that because it's gonna be really tough to fill that venue. And it's, it is a benefit, so we really need to raise money for that. And hopefully we're trying to do a, a, um, uh, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we're trying to bring together, okay, the original cell block tango ladies for this. So they're all members, or they're all people that have no dance over 40. So hopefully we'll have a little mini reunion of the original cell block tango ladies and a little performance. 
so then on May 23rd, Monday night, May 23rd, we're having a Gwen Verdon event. It won't exactly be a panel, it won't exactly be a performance, it's gonna be more video. Uh, Paul Phillips, her stage manager, is flying out from Florida. We have some video from her son, and Leroy Rivers is in charge, and Trujillo sure will have a lot, because he worked a lot with Gwen as well. And uh, I think maybe probably here is Tom Baylor will help us with that as well. So all I can say is these events don't happen by themselves. You know, it takes a lot of time and effort, and we really do need your help. And as we say in, as we say in Chicago, we simply cannot do it alone. We rely on our members and our membership dues to provide us with the funds to put on all these events for you. Uh, for the last three years, Broadway Cares, Everybody Fights AIDS, has become a support and offered us a grant to keep us going. But we need much more than one generous organization to help us grow. So in the coming years, we will try and focus on fundraising, hoping to get organizations and individuals to provide us with the means to grow and give you a big, bigger and better organization and bigger events. Uh, we try to give our members as much support as possible and link with the Actors Fund, Career Transitions for Dancers, and Broadway Cares as often as we can. We participate in the Broadway Cares flea market and link with all those organizations uh, to our website with free ads and internet links. Career Transitions for Dancers helps move people into other fields. Actors Fund supports dancers and actors when they're in need of housing and jobs and counseling. But we at Dancers Over 40, we nurture the dancer's soul. And that's very hard to quantify. We're, we're here to build a community where all dancers feel comfortable and where they can not only survive, but thrive. Because no matter what occupation, what circumstance, as was already said, once a dancer, always a dancer. Thank you all for coming and see you in the spring.